we're learning to be tool safe. Watch this video to find out the safety guidelines for this tool. Let's look at the soldering iron, a very important tool in any computer engineering technology class. It's often used to connect components to a printed circuit board. It's often used to do minor electronics repairs as well. Never use it for something it is not intended for in the classroom, and always ask your teacher before attempting to repair anything on your own. To be tool safe, the safety issues we're looking at are how to set up your soldering work area to help bend fumes and how to handle this hot tool. We want to make sure it's where you want it at all times so nobody gets burned. Before we get started, let's inspect the soldering iron. We want to make sure that the tip of the iron is in good shape. Over time, it becomes corroded and breaks down because of the heat. If it isn't in good shape, your instructor can replace it. We also want to inspect the cord and plug for fraying, splitting, or defective plug. If they are damaged, give the iron to your instructor. There's the risk of an electrical shock or a short causing a fire. The instructor will either repair the iron or throw it out. Ensure you always plug it in and take it out using the plug part, not the wire cord part. Where you place the cord of the soldering iron is very important for your work process. You don't want to create a tripping hazard. Not all shops have drop-down or desktop-located power supplies. You want to make sure that nothing can get caught on the cord and pull on the iron while you're working or looking away and assembling. If the iron is not secure in a workspace and becomes loose, it may cause a serious burn or even a hot puncture wound unintentionally. Most soldering irons come with a small, built-in stand or have a separate holder. Be sure to use it and make sure it can't just fall off the workspace surface. Some classrooms even have what are called helping hands, stands with small clamps to hold pieces well. Depending on the job, you may decide it's safer to use these. Also make sure there's nothing combustible or flammable left around, like compressed air for computer parts cleaning, or alcohol swabs, or other chemicals. Make sure you are doing soldering on a non-conductive, non-damageable surface. Some teachers recommend using a rubber cutting mat to protect classroom desks or a proper industrial workshop table. We we'll use special non-toxic solder in classrooms. You should review the MSDS for the solder that is used in your classroom to be aware of the safety risks. No matter what, ensuring proper fume ventilation is very important. In the process of the solder melting, the flux is boiled off into the air. It's a chemical cleaning, flowing, and purifying agent. That's what helps against oxidation of your solder. To capture the flux fumes, we use a fume extractor. It uses a carbon filter to trap them. Make sure it is placed close to where you are soldering. Try to not breathe any fumes in. Ensure there is fresh air. Before we start soldering, we must put on our PPE safety glasses. Many teachers also recommend to use heat-resistant gloves and ensure that all loose clothing, jewelry, and long hair are safely out of the way. Molten solder is over 200 degrees Celsius and will burn immediately if it comes into contact with your skin or eyes. Some teachers recommend a mask to help with fumes. Some classrooms have a fume extractor. Put away your phone and focus. When soldering, you have the soldering iron in one hand and the solder in the other. You need something to stop the board from moving around. The PC board stand or a set of helping hands will allow the board to remain steady while soldering. Make sure you've assembled all the components you need in one spot before starting the job, so you don't leave a hot iron alone. The tip of the iron should always have a coating of solder on it to protect from corrosion. When we are ready to solder, we clean up the tip with the wet sponge and add more solder. This helps in the transfer of heat. Place the iron on the pad, but also touching the lead. The solder is on the other side of the pad. Once hot enough, the solder will begin to melt. Feed in enough solder so that it surrounds the lead and fills the pad. Raise the iron and solder up along the lead. A good solder joint should be shiny and have a concave shape to it. That indicates a good connection to both the pad and the lead. Once you have finished soldering each connection, be sure to return the iron to the stand. The stand provides protection from the hot tip. Leaving it in the open increases the likelihood of being burnt. It is also a very sharp tip so plan your moves carefully. If you do experience a burn from the iron, run cool water over the burn for 15 minutes until the pain subsides. Do not use ice. The burn should then be covered with gauze to protect the skin. If a blister does form, do not burst it. It exposes the area to infection. Also, make sure you inform the teacher that you have burned yourself. There may be a safety incident report to fill out. 
Once you have finished soldering, it is time to put all the tools and equipment away. Follow the procedure for cleaning in your classroom shown by your teacher. The soldering iron can go back on the rack where it can cool down safely. Remember, you cannot tell how hot an iron is by looking at it, so always assume that the iron is hot. Okay, let's do our soldering tool safe review. Inspect your equipment and be familiar with the MSDS for the type of soldering materials you are using. Only perform soldering in a well-ventilated area. Be aware of the hot and sharp iron at all times. Place it in a proper holder while working. Secure the workpieces to make sure that they do not move while soldering. Make sure the soldering iron is cool before putting it away. No burn first aid procedures? Clean up your workspace and store your tools. And if you're not sure about anything for safety, ask your teacher for more direction. And don't forget to be tool safe.